Hello, everyone. This is Jamie Pate. Welcome to my studio and welcome to what I affectionately call my Tower of Mini Albums. This is in no way, shape or form all of my mini albums. However, it is quite a little collection of mini albums through the years. Nothing even terribly new is in here. These are some older ones. And I just wanted to share this with you as I was going through it. I just found myself just kind of looking at some things. I pulled out a mini album that I want to share with you today. To start today's tutorial, I want to share with you what I picked from my Tower of Mini Albums to replicate. So we're going to make a version of this accordion book. It's one of the accordion books are super easy to make. I don't know if you made them before. I used to make them all the time. And that was before I was doing storytelling. It was just to make them and be very artistic with them way back in the day. That was a long time ago. And I'm kind of returning to that with this weekend vibes kind of accordion book. Sometimes concertina book is another name for them. So what you're going to see here with this book is it is six inches tall. Each of the panels are four inches wide. So you can already figure out we're going to be using a single piece of 12 by 12 paper, or you could use two different pieces of 12 by 12 paper. Cut it six inches high, and then we're just going to do some scoring. So let me show you how that goes. But the thing about this accordion book is that it's really long. So it's not quite 24 inches because of this little binding apparatus we have have here but when you open it up it's it's 23 inches <laughs> there's a lot here so then that lends itself to this could be a super great birthday card right this could be obviously an album i made this a summer little album i'm finding as i let me just to say this really quick maybe this will help somebody I'm finding as I've really kind of regenerated my storytelling in my album, and I need to do a walkthrough of that because I've been adding a lot to my 24 album. I kind of will maybe like not do it quite chronologically, and I realize, oh, there's a story in between these pages that I'd like to tell. So albums are great for that because I can still add this into, I can make pockets inside my album to add these to. There's a lot of options I can have here. So it's why I'm still turning to mini albums is because a lot of times it can tell like a focused story. It can tell maybe the in-between story that you didn't get chronologically in your album. Anyway, so I don't want to ramble on about that, but that's just kind of what happened here is I have some pictures from my granddaughter's birthday party and I realized I just kept telling stories in my book and I didn't fit these in the, these this particular story so that's kind of what's going on here okay enough babbling about that so on my table I have kaleidoscope by 49 and market and so I'm this is I, I'm finding this is kind of a busy collection which is okay not not a hater at all and you might have seen I put this number 10 tag album on my Instagram feed. This There's actually a video that shares how to do this. This was a great jumping off place to kind of discover these patterns and to play with them a little bit and to kind of break them up and see what all this is made of. I enjoyed doing that for that purpose there. And so as I've done that, I do know this as I go through these patterns here. I, I've already cut this one up, but I only need six inches. So I'm going to grab this. I think I'm going to grab, this is the solids paper. And I just thought this was really pretty with her dress. So that's where that's coming from. Okay, so let's get started on this. Okay, to start, you need two pieces of six by 12 paper. It can be solid. It can be pattern. It's up to you. It's just whatever you want. And you just kind of decide maybe what part of the pattern you want. If it does have a pattern, it it's super open to interpretation here, how you go about that. And you can, of course, make this smaller. I just don't have it today to make smaller, but you could. Okay, I'm not going to... There's a apparatus for this particular scoreboard where I can add a scoring tool in there. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use this tool for now. So at the one inch, I'm going to score. Then I'm going to go to four inches here. So I'm lining this up over here on the left at four inches and I'm going to score. Then I'm going to go to eight inches. 
So line my paper up at eight inches and I'm gonna score. So that gives me three four inch panels. Then I know this is gonna be my cover. I'm looking at this because it looks like the writing is this way, but I want this to be the front. So yeah, the writing's both ways, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do the same exact thing here. So this is my front panel, but it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be one inch and then four inches and then move it all the way down to eight inches. You could add another page to this, of course, and you just have all kinds of space for any kind of story you wanna tell. I think we don't need our trimmer or our scoreboard anymore. So go ahead and take a moment to get all of those pieces folded at their score line. This is actually gonna go this way because this is my front. Here's my one inch, that's my part of my front. And this could be as small, this could be a half inch. It doesn't have to be one inch. It's just how I did it. I don't know why I did it that way. I made that album quite a while back. All right, so you can probably figure out what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead, this doesn't have to be super folded the little one inch part, but it doesn't hurt. So basically you're just gonna layer these one on the other, kind of figure out where your middle is going to be, or you could add two holes here. I'm gonna just go ahead and do one. Just gonna mark this right here. I'm gonna come in here with my multi-punch and on the quarter inch, I'm gonna go find where I marked that, it's a little hidden there, but I found it. I'm gonna try and take my, there we go, I got stuck. Okay, then what I wanna do is create a hole enforcer. And then I'm gonna glue that to the top of here. I, I wanted kind of a contrasting color there, so I use kind of that white part of that pattern paper. So I'm just gonna glue that. And then after we get this done, I'll show you just a couple of things I'm gonna do on the inside of this. Okay, then let that dry. Uh, you could use twine to, com to bind these two papers. I'm looking for, there it is. I used ribbon for mine. Then I added some baker's twine to it. You could add more tags to it. You could add, you could make that part of your cover embellishment if you want. So we're going to let that dry and then we'll bind that together. Okay, I've grabbed some ribbon here. I need to make a decision on what ribbon I'm going to use to bind that. Before I add that in though, both of these papers have the hole that we're going to use to add the ribbon, but to just kind of reinforce it, I'm going to bring in some double-sided adhesive tape on the one inch part. That's the only part that this is going to be on is the one inch part. Okay, don't put it anywhere else. Don't put it over the, there's, a, it's hard to see here, but there's a score line there. Don't go over the score line. Don't go over the score line or it's not gonna work. And I want this to work for you. So I'm just gonna line up our edges again. And then at this point, after we've got this two, these two panels put together, I think I got my little reinforced hole there messed up. Then you're gonna see how, ta-da, you have this as a really large panel inside. I'm just gonna come in here and give it a little bit more of a crease. And then I have a video on my channel too where I have, I share how to DIY and color your own ribbon. And I share on there my favorite uh, seam binding. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link it. But that's where this has come from. I just made a bunch up. And that's just how pretty that is. So that's basically how that looks. Over time, this will flatten out. This has flattened out. So if, the, if you want this to go around, you can do that. You can make this, instead of it wrapping just right there and being pretty, this could completely wrap all the way around so you could have it closed like this. 
Okay, so you got options, just whatever it is that works for you on this. This could also be an option while it is relaxing. That 49 and Market paper can be pretty thick. It's a it's like 110 weight cardstock. It's it's heavy duty. It's perfect for mini albums because of its sturdiness. So that's there like that for right now. Okay, let me show you some ideas for the inside. Okay, on this front panel, I've decided I'm going to put one of the larger photos. I just trimmed it down. I don't have a, bur a border on it. And then I rounded the corners and it's just gonna go completely flat on here. One option for this space too, like I did on this one here, is to create a small little photo flip with washi tape. That was one option there. I decided to just go completely flat with this photo. Could actually have even been a little bit bigger, but like I have something on there. Then I took this die. It's a skinny pocket die to make a skinny pocket. That's gonna go over here on this page. And uh, I kind of went back and forth because I used the solids paper for the kaleidoscope and it could have been a little bit more contrasting. And actually I think I'm gonna kind of move it over here a little bit to this left because this is really pretty over here. And then it's going to be home to this snapshot here which I'll use. I just have here, sometimes I just grab, it's just right here at my at my fingertips, and this large roll of three millimeter foam adhesive is here. So I just am grabbing that, and I'm gonna use that. The three millimeter might be a little, little tall. We'll see. I can always come back if I think it's too much. I think for now, I'll just do the one. Pop this in here like this. Oops. And I think that's kind of fun to have snapshots. I will put a tag in here for this. I have this little memories ephemera here. And so that's basically what's gonna happen right here is just a couple of items for this particular little page. Of course, a butterfly. Okay, and its wings can kind of come up a little bit. Okay, so then we have this whole space. Okay, I've added photos in. I've written my story. Let me show you what I did here. So I'm pretty happy how this turned out. And my focus too was to make sure I had a whole entire panel for my story. And I still got more room in here as well. But let me show you what I did. So I added these photos in here, which you know me, if the photos don't match what's going on, I'll cover them up somehow, which is what I did. And then I clipped on this, the story. I might put the date there. I created a pocket here using another one of the skinny nested pockets dies. And then I have a tag in here that I can add some more things that happened during that day and get other, I would like to get some other people's voices in this as well. I want to show you too that the little simple clustered embellishment that's here in blue, I did something very similar here in the peach kind of story. Then I had these two photos that I added, or I told you that I added in this journaling. I have her picture here and some of the journaling has to do with this picture. And I'm, I kind of like this white space here and I think I'm gonna leave it. I keep going back and forth whether I should add something, but I think I'm okay with just how clean it is. And then this was a piece of the ephemera that I added a three sides to have adhesive and create its own pocket. So that's what's in there. And then, um, like I said, more of the embellished clusters and I'll then embellish the front. Everything just kind of lays on top of itself like that. And that is how you make, I don't know, I guess we call it a layered accordion book. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments, and I'll see you in the next video.